Hey everybody, this is Joel with Brutally Delicious. We're here to talk about an album by Scott Garmore. Scott Garmore. I will have to spell this. <laughs> S-K-O-G-A-R-M-A-O-R. Uh, this is a Nordic neo-folk project. It was described to me as a Viking black metal. Um, we'll get to that in a second. The music is done by a dude named Zeb Kroom. Uh, he's from Asheville, North Carolina, the foggy mountains of Appalachia, as he puts it. Now that landscape is beautiful. A lot of history on those hills, uh, rivers, forests, mountains. And with that, I imagine would come a harshness uh, and a danger. Um, a landscape ripe for for black metal musicians, which Zeb used to be, in fact. Skagarmore is not, though. Uh, not at all. One could say uh, the production of the album, this new album, The Kroom Sagas, it's called, is it's lo-fi enough to please the ears of black metal fans. You know, there's a chilliness to it. And there's a communal presence about it as well, which brings with it some warmth. You know, like you're you're at your favorite pub with your family and your your best buddies, you know. Uh, and then and then Mr. Kroom is in the corner telling stories about all your ancestors. Opening track, the ale tale is a perfect stage setter. Um, there's uh, galloping horses and carriages, a wooden flute rushing water, layered keyboards, and a narration about kinship and pain and honor. The, the tribal drums pick up. You hear war horns. Everybody's there. It sounds like everyone has shown up to this, to this event. And the rest of the album plays that way. Uh, traditional Nordic type storytelling, poetry, uh, both in that language and, uh, and in English at times. Um, traditional instruments as well, like lyres, harps, skin drums, flutes, various percussions, uh, like metal on metal sounds, maybe, uh, I don't know, silverware on a triangle or, uh, or sword making. Uh, that's actually something that they, that, uh, Kroom does use is the sound of sword making. There are also uh, a lot of nature sounds throughout too, birds singing, rushing water, uh, things like that. Uh, it's very much like uh, bands like Wardruna and Vekavi and Heelung, things like that. There's also another uh, one-man project that I really like a lot called Sun and Moon Dance. And that guy is also from North Carolina. Uh, so do check that out. And if I had to pick one song from the Kroom Sagas, that's sort of representative of the whole, it would be Firstborn Son. That's track five, about halfway through the record. It has all of the things that I've been describing, but also some uh, women singing in sort of soprano woodland voices. And he's doubled up on a chanted chorus section towards the middle of the tune. It's really the, the eeriest song on the record, which is overall a fairly intense listen. So play it at night, outside by a fire. It will be good company. All right. Yep. So we'll chat soon. We'll see you later. Everybody take care. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>